What Pythagoras realized is that plants and animals grow according to fairly precise mathematical laws. It's not just chance that flowers unfold in beautiful patterns, and the Greeks found the patterns were based on a particular geometrical ratio. But it wasn't until the Renaissance that an Italian did the maths. He figured out that the key to beauty was the ratio of 1 to 1.618. Do something like measure the distance from the floor to your navel, and then from your navel to your head. If you're well proportioned, the ratio should be 1 to 1.618, and that ratio is seen all over the beautiful body. People started noticing it. Artists noticed that the width of the in a beautiful face, for example. Yeah. Not in any face, but it had to be beautiful. If a face was beautiful, the width of the mouth was exactly 1.618 times the width of the nose. Really? If the face wasn't beautiful, that wasn't the case. Dentists, yeah. in their dental work, noticed that the upper front tooth was 1.618 times as wide as the next, next tooth over, the lateral incisor. Oh. So the central incisor was 1.618 times the width of the lateral incisor, the next tooth over. Wonderful. Give me some more examples. Uh, the, your, fingers, the, um, the, your fingers are each called phalanges, yeah. and each bone in the finger is called a phalanx. And the phalanx that's most, the closest to your knuckle here is 1.618 times the, uh, the phalanx that's in the middle, and that's 1.618 times the length of the phalanx at the end, which is your fingernail. So that was kind of amazing. This number would come up over and over again. This is uh, what's called a golden divider. It divides uh, different line areas or distances from uh, into 1 and 1.618, which is the golden ratio. And in a beautiful face, we'll see that ordinarily the width of the mouth is 1.618 times the width of the nose. And a dozen are exactly. If we look at the teeth, we can see that ordinarily Show me your teeth and smile a little bit. The width of the upper front tooth is 1.618 times the width of the tooth right next to it, and the same on the other side. The width of the upper front tooth is 1.618 times the tooth next to it. It's amazing how this proportion uh, is repeated over and over again on a beautiful face. And the same thing with Sarah. If I, if I uh, do the width of her mouth, I'm sorry. No, it's a bit again. <laughs> I, I'm a surgeon. Scary. I'm used to sharp things. <laughs> I hardly ever cut myself. Okay, so. So if I do the width of her mouth to the width of her face, the camera should be able to see that this, uh, the width of the mouth is 1.618 times the distance from the, the mouth to the corner of the cheek. And it is. Anyway, this, this relationship holds up over and over again in the face. And Zara's a great example. That's why she's so pretty. So Zara's face fits the golden ratio. Not bad, is it? Mm -hmm. I'm so good. <laughs> Now, this idea that maths can explain a beautiful face, any beautiful face, has been taken even further by Stephen Marquardt. So if I look at the nose, the nose is a triangle. Mm. On the front view, on the side view, the nose is a triangle again. Mm. And in a beautiful face, the sides of the triangle are 1.618 times greater than the base. And from a triangle, you can build a pentagon. What's the most attractive configuration of the face, the most attractive expression? Smile. Smiling. Yeah. When I smile, Oh, you start what? to see the pentagons here. Yes, I here. do. There. Okay. It's the there, there, there. Right, exactly. Stephen Marquardt combined pentagons and triangles all with the 1.618 ratio and built a mask. He claims that the closer a face conforms to his mask, the more beautiful it is. Let's start with the Kate Moss. All right. You know, Kate looks totally different than the others. All right. But if I put the mask on her, you can see that it fits very closely. The interesting thing about Kate is that her eyes are uh, preternaturally wide or unusually wide. Her eyebrows fit beautifully, her lips, her nose, her jawline is very, very nice, even if the hairline is exactly where it should be. And it's not just women. The same mask can be put on men. And Tom Cruise fits it perfectly. In fact, Stephen claims it fits any human face, so long as it's beautiful. Here's one of my favorite. Having discovered the mask, Dr. Marquardt was able to successfully use it as a template when reconstructing patients' facial deformities. Okay, now Elizabeth Hurley. She's almost as good looking as you, but <laughs> let's see, I think, oh my gosh, it's pretty darn close. 
the eyebrows are just on the upper edge of the mask, giving this nice arch. It looks beautiful. Oh, don't tell us. So, yeah, it'll, terrible. it'll be our secret. The cheeks are perfect. The nose fits beautifully in there. The lips, the width of the lips is great. The lower lip has a beautiful curvature. The, the chin and jawline is great. It's just remarkable how it fits.